this? Yes, I am. Hey, of course I'm filming this. It's the future. All right. Everybody's got their uh, iPhones and Samsung Google phones and flip cameras that they don't sell anymore, which is yeah, a shame. Yeah, that's which right. Is really weird. I mean, yeah. they were hot and suspicious. I find it very suspicious. <laughs> I really do. I don't know what's going on. So what's it like working with these guys? Um, working with them is all right. But them getting to work with me is awesome. <laughs> Um, no, it's great. Uh, who, the crew? Uh, well, the crew in Philly is, is great. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's so nice to see them every year. We only get to see them once a year for like a week or so. So mm -hmm. it's, it's great to come to Philly and see them. And, I mean, the cast is uh, its awesome. I mean, I mean, it's like working with your best friends. It's the greatest job in the world. Couldn't ask for a better is. job. Yeah. I bet it is. I wanted to ask about your character. Yeah. He's a sociopath, but thinks he's a decent, normal, nice guy. Yeah. Where, where, did, where, does he, where did that come from within you to, to build that? Well, I find extraordinarily self-centered people who don't take anyone else's uh, needs into consideration so funny. I, I have always thought that it was a very funny quality in people, you know, uh, the kind of people who don't use their blinker, the kind of people who just, you know, who just don't take anybody else into consideration seemingly in their lives. So, so I like the idea of creating a character who essentially thought of himself as a good guy, but just completely had blinders on in terms of, uh, you know, taking anyone else's needs into consideration. I just find that very, very funny. And, and you know, it, it, comes, it definitely comes off, he definitely year after year as the character progresses starts to seemingly become more and more of a sociopath. Um, but I don't think he is genuinely a sociopath. I think he does feel emotion. He's just uh, not very good at showing it or... or uh, <laughs> but he, most, he mostly only gets emotional when it comes to himself. Can you kind of talk about the new season? What are we going to see this year? We talked a little bit with, um, with Charlie and Ron about it. Um, I'm, I'm actually more... I would have to say uh, I'm more excited about this season than I, than I have been in a lot of seasons in the past. I just think it's... I just think it's... We're definitely taking things to the next level. It's, it's darker. It's wilder. It's funnier. There's, I mean... Some pretty, pr we're getting into some pretty outrageous uh, shit this year. We're also doing a really fun uh, two-part uh, high school reunion episode where we're going to bring back a lot of characters you've seen in the past on the show. But even more exciting than that, we're going to bring into uh, into play a lot of characters that we've talked about on the show, but that you've never actually met. Uh, one in particular, Tim Murphy, who's the guy who uh, we established in the first season of the show, slept with my prom date. So there's a nice, uh, nice confrontation between myself and uh, and the, the man who slept with my. And you can imagine how how Dennis might react to something like that, being as egotistical <laughs> as, as he is. Um, and uh, there's a great uh, uh, there's a great episode where we. Um, we had this idea where we thought it would be funny. We thought the idea of, of the movie Pretty Woman was, was always such a funny idea, like that we wanted to we wanted to sort of do an episode where we portrayed <laughs> what it, what it would actually be like to try and marry and have a relationship with a prostitute. So we've got Frank getting into a relationship with a prostitute this year. Um, and of course, I'm sure you've heard by now. Rob gained 50 pounds for the season, so we're going to be addressing. Um, his sort of decline as a as a as a as a person, how he how he declined so far so quickly into gaining 50 pounds of fat, um, and uh, yeah, I mean, <clears throat> I'm trying to think what else we're doing uh, this year that would be worth uh, worth talking about. But I'll, I'll think of it as we as we keep going. Do you have one favorite episode from seasons past? I, I it's sad to say, but I, I have a lot actually. I, yeah. It's it's tough for me to it's tough for me to pick any one in particular. You know, it's like asking me who my favorite baby is. <laughs> I, can't, I can't do it. Can't do it. Also, because I don't have any babies. So. <laughs> you can imagine that uh, Dennis is going to be pretty happy with the fact that Mac has gained some weight. Dennis gets to kind of. Well, that was that was part of the fun of uh, of breaking stories for the season because we obviously had to plan really far in advance. If he was going to gain 50 pounds, he had to have a lot of time to do it. So there was a lot of talk of, of whether that would be something that Dennis would enjoy because now he becomes even more the focus of attention or possibly it makes Dennis look worse because now he's rolling with a crew that includes, you know, that his best friend includes like a, a, a big fat guy, you know, and does that, does that sort of mess with, mess with how I'm perceived? Um, and we sort of explore all that. We explore all that territory this year show yeah so was there a conversation to say you know, what if 
you gain some weight? Uh, how, how did that come up? Or who's, whose idea was it? It was Rob's idea. Mm -hmm. he, um, it, we, we, as a matter of fact, um, weren't even entirely sure we were on board with it at first. Uh, we thought it was a little bit extreme. And we weren't sure if we were going to be able to... You know, we had to. We, we don't like to serialize the episodes very much, um, but we've been forced to in the past. We were forced to serialize the show in season two when Danny came on board to explain why he was there and why he was staying. So we had continuous episodes. Where normally our episodes are sort of each small contained things. Um, and then, of course, we had to do it last year because Caitlin was pregnant. So we had to address her pregnancy and how that happened and then her having the baby. So we had to serialize the show in that way. We felt like if he was going to be fat, <clears throat> that that was going to be sort of an arc that we were going to have to build into the season. And that's the kind of thing that can either limit you as a show or it can open you up. He was pretty dead set on it. And the more we talked about it, the more we realized it would be very original. Something I've never seen before on television. I've, you've certainly heard of, of, of you know big name actors you know gaining or losing right. massive amounts of weight for right. these giant movie roles like Martin Scorsese movie right. or something. Right. But you never hear about a, an actor on a television show. You know, the actors generally get better and better looking as the seasons go by and the actors themselves have more money and they get new teeth and new skin and, you know, they start lifting everything, you know. Right. So, so him, him, watching him decline into being even more, uh, being, becoming more and more sort of uh, deteriorating um, was something that we'd never quite seen before. So we, we eventually decided to go with it. Is your character based on any one person in your real life or a combination of people? Where did um, you come up with the idea for this character? It's always been a, it's always been a little bit of an act for me. I've always liked to make people laugh by just sort of saying the most vain, ludicrously vain thing I possibly could. So I think it's probably uh, it's if anything, it's based on the probably the bizarro version of me. You know, not to say that I'm the I'm the greatest guy in the entire world because I'm not, but but uh, sure you are. Dennis is probably my uh, <laughs> he's probably my polar opposite. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He's like the uh, you know the venom to he's like venom to Spider Man. <laughs> <That's just dorky laughs> We're like, who is the? Wasn't there a Superman bad guy too? Bizarro. Bizarro Superman. <laughs> Great. There you go. He's like Bizarro Glenn. Dennis is Bizarro Glenn. This is all the worst aspects of myself just heightened to the highest possible. That must be very fun to be able to do that. It's a fucking blast. <laughs> it's a blast. What gets Dennis up in the morning? Gets him out of bed? Probably his boner. <laughs> um, no, I don't know. Um, what gets Dennis up in the morning? Uh, the, the thought of conquering another day. I mean, I think in Dennis's mind, you know, he is just exactly where he wants to be in life. Um, you know, he, he's got everything going for him. He's got a cool job. He owns a bar, which is awesome. Uh, you know, he gets tons of chicks. He lives in the, he lives in a cool city. Um, I think in Dennis's mind, the thing that gets him up in the morning every day is just the thought of getting to spend another day as, as himself. <laughs> that's, that's a good answer. Really, that's actually a really good line. I might have to put that in the show. <laughs> what gets you up in the morning every day, Dennis? I don't know, the thought of waking up and getting to be me all over again. <laughs> I love it. That's really good. I might put that in the show. Right? <laughs> there you go. Say, hey, we inspired that. You did. You absolutely did. What's it like working with someone of Danny DeVito's caliber? <laughs> sorry, that is really funny. <laughs> It's still making me laugh. Okay. Uh, I'm sorry, what? I'm glad I could make you laugh. Well, see, that's what I'm saying. Like, I, I am horrible. I'm like, nobody likes me, makes me laugh more than me. And that's <laughs> incredibly vain. Of me. Uh, and that's not to say that I'm the funniest guy in the world. I'm not. It's just to me, I am. Right. Well, that's uh, all that matters, right? That's all that matters. <laughs> so, what? I'm sorry, what? What well, is it like working with someone of Danny DeVito's caliber? <laughs> you know, I... I can only speak to what it's like to work with Danny, not necessarily other people of his cap, just because Danny is such a unique human being. I mean, you know, I think usually somebody of his sort of stature in, in Hollywood can you know, just be a right cocksucker. And he is just the nicest guy you'd ever possibly want to meet. I mean, he's, he's nice, he's friendly, he's open, he loves people, he loves, he loves his family. Um, I mean, you know, it, it's an inspiration to all of us to see a guy who's had so much so much success and made so much money um, in this business uh, be in so many ways as grounded 
you know, as you possibly can. But then you get the things like we go to a restaurant today for lunch, and you know, he starts asking the fucking kitchen to get him shit that they don't. That's not even on the menu, and of course they do it because he's standing. You know, so, right. <laughs> you know, he gets the perks. He gets the perks too, but people love him so much that you know, and he's never an ass. He's never an asshole about it. Mm-hmm. Cool. Yeah. What other stuff do you watch on TV? Do you watch TV? I don't, you know, I don't have time to watch a ton of TV, but I, I actually love watching, um, I, I love watching TV when it's good. I mean, there's not, just not, there's not a ton of great stuff out there, but there's enough to keep me interested. I mean, uh, I, I, my, probably my favorite show on television is Intervention. You know, I just, I'm just totally addicted to that show. Um, I've been getting into Breaking Bad lately. I think that's a fantastic show. It's really, 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 really well written show. Um, I really, it's, in terms of comedies, I almost never watch comedy just because it's what I do for a living. Yeah. Right. I mean, most people go home and they watch comedy because it's a release for them. You had a shitty day at work and they go home and watch something that makes them laugh. For me, it's like go home, going home and watching something that I just did all day long, and, you know. Uh, but in terms of comedy, I mean, I, I still really love South Park. And, uh, I really enjoyed, um, I still haven't seen this yet, but I really enjoyed the first season of uh, He's Bound and Down. Mm. I thought that was a fantastic show. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, that, I mean, that's, I don't watch a ton of, don't watch a ton of stuff. At least you didn't say, like, I don't have a TV. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, that's a fucking douchebag answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't own a TV. No. <laughs> yeah, you watch fucking TV at your friend's house, you can't afford one, bitch. <laughs> I don't have a TV. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> or like I don't watch I don't watch any TV. I just watch movies. Oh right. What do you watch? And then you go over to that person's house. You know you can fucking catch them watching the Real Housewives of the OC. Like, oh, <laughs> no, I was just watching a movie. So, um, can you tell me a little bit about or tell us your, about your Philly connection, like? What, what have you learned about Philly, or tell us tell us about how you feel about Philly in regards to the show and in regard to yourself? Mm. I did a play in Philly right out of college. It was the first time I'd ever been here. I'm not, I'm not from Philly, um, and uh, I was broke as all hell because I was only making 400 bucks a week. Um, so I really got a sense of the city just from kind of walking around. It reminded me, like, was, at the time I was living in New York City, um, and I was broke as shit there. So basically my life in New York City and my life in Philly initially were pretty much the same. Chinese food, Chinese food, Irish pubs, and uh, and then just trying to scrape by. Uh, but no, I mean, I, I, it's, it's a great, you know, I, I'm completely biased because, I mean, when I come here, we get such a warm welcome. Like, I mean, I don't know what it's like for everybody else, you know what I mean? I doubt that many people roll into Philly and everybody's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> like, fuck you, get the fuck out of my way. You know? uh, but but we're the city shit. of brotherly love. The city of brotherly, brotherly love. Uh, I mean, I get a lot of love here, so, I mean... It's uh, it's kind of a beautiful it's kind of a beautiful thing. And I'm usually here with a big group of people, so I hate when people ask me what my favorite restaurant is. The truth is, I've been to so many good restaurants in the city, and I don't know the name of a single one of them. Because right? basically, people are like, "Oh, we're going here tonight." I'm like, "All right," and I fucking get in the car and I go, and I, I show, that's gonna sound so douchey. <laughs> that's gonna sound so douchey. That's it. Right. You'll, you'll sound yeah. great. Yeah. But what I mean to say I'm is, not gonna edit. I'm not editing. <laughs> You know, no editing. It's just, it's been, you know, we, we just get a lot of, we get a lot of love here. So it's made very easy for me here, I guess is what I'm trying to say, because the city seems to have really embraced our show and our character, which I really appreciate. So it makes, certainly, you know, uh, so my experience in the city is different than some of the guys, but I love it here. That's cool. Okay. All right. Yeah, Can I get a picture? Yeah, of course. With me.